This uh, attractive and shiny coat pocket size radio is the Zenith Royal 500E from around 1959. It was Zenith's top of the line pocket size radio for that year. And uh, as the model number 500E suggests, there were a number of revisions before this one. I've already done a video on the uh, very first one, and eventually I'll get around to you know, doing videos on some of the models uh, in between the two. This particular model is uh, hard to find in good condition because this uh, metal piece around the dials was not very well thought out. The plating is very fragile, as is the um, you know, lettering on top of it. There's no clear coat or anything over it, so it you know very easily corrodes and rubs away. Short of finding a you know totally new old stock example that was kept well away from moisture and any kind of wear, this is about the best you can really hope to find. Whoever owned this before me must not have kept it in the case, and it looks like they didn't really use it much at all. Although they did unfortunately leave batteries in it, which uh, ruined the label inside the battery compartment. I replaced all the electrolytic capacitors in this radio and it plays quite well. Newsletters are amazing. Do you have any type of email marketing going? On the one hand, you desire what you want. Joining us every single week at this time, you can get them on Twitter at I can't imagine, even if you were to... CSI 300 also on me. It's also hard to find these with a good speaker. Rattly speakers seem to be uh, quite common with this model, unfortunately. You can hear this one starts distorting once I turn it up past fairly low volume. There are a number of color variations of this model made. This is probably the most attractive and uh, collectible one. The uh, two-tone kind of a dark red and white. I'm not sure what Zenith called this color. You can see this one has its original uh, sticker on the back which says quality built in America by highly skilled well-paid American workers. By the time this radio was made Japanese transistor radios were flooding in so Zenith and uh, several other American makers, I guess notably Sylvania tried to appeal to people's patriotism to drive up their sales and I'm sure it helped at least a little bit there's what's left of the uh, battery label you can see there's some discoloration there there's a little bit of discoloration on the outside but it's really not noticeable when the radio is standing upright and I could probably polish that away it takes uh, four double A's as you can see At least the uh, instructions for disassembling the radio are intact. You can see this radio was built to a pretty high quality standard. All the transistors are socketed. It's got a nice metal tuning cap with a veneer drive. And it does use an output transformer, unlike a lot of other American sets by this time. And also unlike the later uh, 500E1, which is a cost reduced version that eliminated that output transformer and also um, got rid of the transistor sockets. I uh, hid all the new capacitors underneath the chassis so it looks you know all original on the surface. It's hard to get the uh, battery cover on these seated properly because of this weird tab here that goes over the top 
I don't know why Zenith did that. This set, like a lot of uh, other examples of this model, has a little bit of bending of the case here from the lid being you know, put on incorrectly, basically where this tab is caught underneath the uh, edge of the plastic. If it gets left that way, I guess it you know deforms after a while. I've also got the three other colors that this model came in. I'll uh, probably eventually sell some of them. I haven't decided that yet. Uh, this one is a uh, 500E1. I remember I had at least one of those. I'll open that one up to show you guys. This one looks the way examples of this model typically look. You can see there's quite a bit of damage to that metal plate around the dial. Uh, same with this one. This black one's in pretty good shape though. And it also still has the sticker on the back. All of them have been uh, recapped in work. I'm not going to bore you with that though. Plus I don't have batteries in them. The uh, battery removal tape thing seems to have welded itself to the side of the case. Unfortunately, let me see if I can get that loose without breaking it. There we go. You can see it's doing some damage to the uh, battery label. I might remove that. Or at least put some padding in here or something. Anyway, um, as I said earlier, the 500E1 was a you know production cost reduced version of the 500E. You can see it's got uh, transistors that are just soldered right to the chassis and the output transformer that was here is gone and now it uses a uh, volume control with you know two switches to uh, disconnect the power since now there's a center tap I don't think this model is different enough to warrant its own video so here goes As you can hear, this one also has a somewhat rattly speaker. It's a common problem with Xena sets, unfortunately. This one's not as sensitive as the uh, 500E I demonstrated earlier, but that may just be a matter of uh, this thing needing alignment. It's not necessarily, you know, due to the circuit being inferior or anything like that. Well, thanks for watching.